Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, uh, we move on to a different uh, understanding of uh, how nasal culture is both uh, sort of uh, contested and we'll try to look in some of the domains and boundaries of culture and at the same time uh, try to look at uh, the various conception of nature, mainly from the works of uh, uh, Ingol at the same time uh, Descola. Now, uh, we'll try to begin with uh, some of the general observations, how nature in a sense is uh, considered to be the central concerns uh, of anthropology of fleet and whether uh, is there any scope of uh, the field of this, the discipline of folk sciences and also cultural ecology in the study of uh, sort of myths and rituals which are normally linked to the environment and uh, the subsistence technique, maybe the foraging group like the hunters and gatherers or if not the kind of agriculture practices. Now one thing is pretty sure that uh, humans uh, engagement with the environment or making sense of the nature tends to take a different forms. Now uh, there is a general uh, understanding that normally things are being socially constructed uh, and also that perhaps tends to guide uh, our understanding of how we uh, make sense of the environment. Now in, in various case studies of for example the hunt, hunting and the gathering societies, even though the knowledge which is being passed on uh, to the younger generations by the elders, maybe they tend to uh, be guided by different kinds of a selection process when it comes to uh, sort of hunting. Maybe even if they are being guided by certain kinds of norms and values in terms of their relationship with the en environment, one cannot really rule out the kind of individual choices one has. Therefore, some of uh, uh, the issues concerning ecology uh, in the recent times uh, has sort of been uh, relegated to the margin of anthropological discussion and also as uh, we see in this postmodernism and culturalist perspective have tends to dominate the center stage of uh, the theoretical advancement uh, in social sciences generally. Therefore, it is important to rethink the nature society interaction or the interface, which in a way means uh, which require a rethinking of the ecological and anthropology in particular and its notion of the kind of reactions between the individual and the environment. So it is not just about the society and the environment, but also sometimes it is more with the individual and the environment. By saying so, I am not deducing the kind of relationship wha with uh, what uh, human and nature share, but also at times uh, one should also look at the kind of uh, personal relationship we have. Now, uh, to begin with, uh, we will try to look at what uh, some of the basic concepts like uh, the symbolic ecology and how this in a way uh, guided the social practices over time. Now, anthropologists uh, of late have uh, perhaps they have uh, 
been pursuing this, but then there is an increasing realization that the nature culture dichotomy in a way is in a inadequate or at times uh, tends to be misleading uh, because of how the way in which people uh, looked at uh, or talks about and interact with their physical environment. Why is this nature culture dichotomy inadequate is because uh, one, one cannot really sort of draw a boundaries or one cannot make uh, hard and fast rules or principles in uh, generalizing. Therefore, one needs to look in a more in depth and more uh, uh, sort of the inner meanings of how we perceive at the same time interact with the physical environment. Now, first and fo foremost is uh, within the, the symbolic anthropology, which in a way has uh, devoted the attention to sort of make sense of the logic of native cosmologies. Now, which in a way appears to sort of classify their components in a more uh, conformity with the rules of the certain domains, which are specific to the cultural groups. Now, symbolic anthropology draws their sort of uh, attention by trying to look at how uh, we as an individual the kind of uh, belief system, for instance, the totems and also the animist and also how we try to categorize and classify uh, the kind of natural surrounding which we are engaged into. Now, let us try to uh, first of all uh, understand or differentiate what is natural and what is supernatural because for quite long, these two uh, has exist as uh, a binary oppositions. Now, usually when nature is uh, sort of assumed to be so transcultural and transhistoric uh, domain of reality, there is no phenomenon or entity which is said to be depart from uh, this ordinary physical possibilities and which in a way can escape being labeled as supernatural. Now, this in a, in a sense uh, it is not really easy for one to really uh, deduce if not uh, demarcate the difference between this natural and supernatural. Now, we, if you look at the, a century ago, Durkheim uh, has argued uh, in his work the idea of what supernatural order is, because supernatural order which in a way is uh, significantly derived from the idea of a natural order of things. Uh, because by saying so, Durkheim, what Durkheim tries to uh, make sense is the supernatural cannot be uh, in, seen in isolation from the natural order of things, because uh, this uh, the former being is a uh, sort of a residue which is the left over category for all those phenomena which appear in a sense incompatible with the uh, rational working in the laws of the universe. Now, therefore, there has been always a claim and counter claim in trying to make sense of this idea of what is natural and what is supernatural. Now, if you look at uh, Durkheim's work mostly, he in a way is trying to make sense from more of a functionalist perspective and when he talk about the most elementary forms of religion, he tends to see religion as something as uh, a unifying factor for the members of society. And uh, uh, Durkheim, by studying uh, some of the most elementary or rudimentary forms of religion like totems, 
wherein a cultural group tends to perceive uh, certain kinds of plants and animals in their surrounding as something which is sacred and he goes on to classify and differentiate between what is sacred, what is profane. Now, therefore, in that context, uh, he tries to make sense of uh, how this idea of supernatural in a sense emerges from this order of things. Now, uh, many others uh, uh, school of thought, so to say, like the cultural ecology or maybe the Marxist anthropology uh, tends to sort of claim that uh, more or less uh, tries to reduce or sidelined Durkheim's understanding and uh, reduce this social construction of nature to a more of a mechanical reflection uh, and tries to sort of draw a boundary between this the social and the physical, because uh, to Durkheim's understanding, uh, things has to be seen as a social fact. A social fact is nothing but uh, seeing uh, the order of things in relations to other. That is, the kind of activities or whatever actions we are engaged into has to be seen in relation to others. That is even if we uh, tend to share some kind of relation with the physical world, it does have some kind of functionalist, functional perspective or functional uh, purposes. Now, therefore, this sort of uh, the social and the physical in a way is being uh, sidelined or uh, pushed aside by the materialist approaches. Now, this sort of concept conceptions of nature is not con the conception of nature is nothing but ideologies that is how uh, there is a representation of the objective at the same time the material forces uh, be it arbitrarily selected limiting to the factors of the ecosystems or uh, which is again may be poorly defined and these levels of uh, productive forces in a way shape the structural at the same time the evolution of societies. Now, by saying so, in a way, human tends to engage in certain kinds of a selection process of how they try to sort of make sense of uh, their surroundings. Now, this is again the, which is uh, being uh, propagated by Descola and Descola further argues that uh, the way in which Levi Strauss has uh, tries to you know uh, see the dichotomy of this nature culture uh, as opposing is uh, again uh, an idea if not uh, Levi Strauss tries to you know uh, downplay this dualism uh, because uh, as we had discussed uh, oh in, in, in the section on how uh, nature and culture is a contested concept Levi Strauss by employing this uh, the structuralist perspective tries to advocate that uh, the naturalist conception of the working of this mind is sort of how he tries to deduce or downplay the dualism which exists between this nature and culture. Now, if you look at the works of uh, 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 Levi Strauss in his The Mythologic, which was uh, published way back in 1964, he tries to dis make a distinction between uh, the nature and culture sort of uh, a central device in ordering that is in semantic uh, metrics. Semantic is nothing but uh, the kind of uh, uh, logic if not uh, which is normally used in uh, the language of co contrastic properties and also which attributes uh, which is expressed in the 
mythological discourses. Now, why is this mythological discourses important in the works of Levi Strauss? Is because he tends to draw much of uh, his study uh, from the native societies of America by looking at their mythologies and uh, in a sense uh, even if uh, Levi Strauss draw from the mytholo mythologies of those native societies, he is not clearly able to distinguish uh, the difference between nature from culture because uh, he draws from that axis the sense for anthropologists which are in a way could be understood by those who are familiar with the area, which means it is difficult for someone who don't belong to this particular discipline of anthropology to really make sense or understand or di differentiate between nature and culture. Now, these are perhaps some of the critics and the drawbacks of uh, Levi Strauss understanding of uh, structuralism or trying to differentiate between nature and the culture uh, argued by Descola. Now, if you look at uh, some of the uh, west of things from the sci Western scientific tradition, this representations of uh, normally the non-human are more or less expressed contextually in their daily actions and interactions, because the knowledge which these native societies uh, possess with the idea of these non-humans is more or less uh, embedded in their everyday practical choices, which are more or less uh, uh, you know, replicated in the form of rituals. And therefore, one needs to see this representation or this idea of non-humans, uh, not necessarily from a Western scientific tradition, but more from the non-Western scientific. Because when we talk about the scientific, it is also about uh, not just the Western uh, notion of understanding, but also the folk societies, how they make sense of their universe. Because the folk sciences, to some extent, also tends to have occupy a more important understanding. Now, there are, as we said, uh, there are different modes of uh, knowing, if not identifying uh, the idea of this nature. Now, usually, uh, as Descola has uh, opined, the anthropologists normally engage in reconstructing uh, mainly the nonverbal kind of uh, practices that is more to do with the actions and practices uh, which uh, we humans are usually engaged into and if we try to we need to sort of make sense of the interconnections of how these actions are being produced only by trying to you know wave together all these actions or the meanings at, attached to that particular actions only can we have the meaningful patterns of uh, how these knowledge are being produced now therefore anthropologists should needs to uh, reconstruct uh, some of these mainly the nonverbal mental models of practices that is trying to stitch together the bits and pieces of uh, how we tend to sort of uh, make sense of the universe. Now again, uh, there are some sort of an opposition which uh, usually engage, uh, exists between the totemic system and the animic systems and uh, which reflects uh, in these uh, sort of modes of identification that is how one identify uh, this sort of differences uh, in the two different systems. 
Now, what is this modes of identification then and why is it useful in this uh, anthropological understanding of nature and culture? This modes of identification in a way uh, sort of uh, makes sense of the boundaries between uh, the self and otherness in the way how we tend to treat the humans and the non-humans. Thus, by uh, engaging in this modes of identification, uh, it, it allows or makes, makes sense of the specific cosmologies and the social topographies. Therefore, these modes of identification again is a tools and a method which allows us to have a much more in depth and worse knowledge about our surroundings. Now, what is totem and what is totemic? Now, uh, before going into that uh, the totemic classification, as I talk about how Durkheim tries to locate the first form of uh, how belief or religious system evolved in many native societies, a totem is something where uh, a particular objects may be a plants, animals or may be uh, a stone, a trees, so and so forth, wherein a, a particular culture group attribute some kind of uh, uh, consider attribute them as sacred. So, by considering as sacred, they might be uh, not they, they, they follow certain kind of a taboo that is they do not engage in the, maybe consuming or if not harming that particular objects. Now, that sort of a reverence which is being shown to certain uh, objects is so, so known to be more of a totemic belief. Now, in this totemic classification uh, usually uh, one uh, make use of this em empirically ob observable discontinuity between the natural species to organize in a more conceptual and in a more segmentary order that is by delimiting the social units. This is wh what uh, Levi Strauss has uh, <coughs> maintained and whereas, in animism it endows the natural beings with the human dispositions and social attributes. Now, what is anim animism or animistic belief? Now, animism in a way uh, tends to uh, engage in that sort of the belief system which is perhaps uh, not uh, ob observable. It is more to do with the kind of unseen if not uh, the spirits which sort of uh, presume or perceive to be dwelling in maybe let us say a forest or maybe uh, in a different setting uh, which, which usually is unseen. Now, therefore, there is this uh, sort of dualism which exists between uh, the totemic and the animic and in the, the animic system there is more of a symmetrical uh, inversion of these totemic classifications because they do not really engage in uh, exploiting the differential relations which exist between the natural species and which in a way is uh, conferring a conceptual order on society, but rather in animic system they use the elementary uh, categories by structuring the social life to organize, which means it has more of a societal implication and depending on the kind of uh, structuring of the social order, we are in a way trying to make sense of the uh, sort of again the supernatural forces which is into play. And this sort of elementary forms of categorization uh, has uh, an overarching impact on the structuring of social life 
uh, and it enable us to uh, make us in a much more organized way. Now, this relations between the humans and the natural species is much more uh, systematized and organized in the anemic system uh, in compare with the totemic classifications. Because uh, in, in totemic system as we had discussed, there is a limitation uh, in terms of the segmentary order of social units. Now, what is totemic system then? A totemic systems are more of uh, non-human and are treated as signs or maybe we can say symbols. Uh, maybe a particular objects can be sort of uh, used as a sign or a symbol. Whereas, in anemic system, they are treated as the term of a relation that is it has more to do with the uh, social order and uh, social classification that is the modes of understanding and interpretation is uh, operationalized in the social order. Now, in totemic system again uh, they are more linked to the segmentary organization. Uh, when we say segmentary we are talking about how divisions are being met uh, and that divisions can be uh, based on let us say the sort of how uh, a descent are being formed that is the same clan might be uh, sort of uh, forming a different group or it may be in a different form like the more of uh, a different groups of clan members. When we say uh, a segmentary societies, it is more to do with the cultural practices, the way they tend to uh, sort of trace their genealogy or the ancestor is same, because they tend to perceive belonging to the same bloodline. So, these totemic systems are more or less linked to the segmentary organizations and are sort of uh, more in absence among societies which lack uh, the decent groups. Now, it, it is more with more to do with an open societies wherein uh, uh, society which are not necessarily based on uh, a decent. When we say a decent group, uh, it is more to do with how a uh, social group in a way uh, draws their uh, genealogy from uh, a particular offspring, the same blood. Wh whereas, in the animist system, it is found that they are more of uh, cognitive as well as uh, segmentary in nature, which is most most closely knitted. Now, therefore, the totem and the animus, if you look at the animus system is more closely integrated and the uh, level of the solidarity is much more uh, integrated and organized. Now, moving on uh, from the totemic and the animist understanding, uh, there is also a different forms of belief system which is called naturalism. Now, in naturalism what is espoused is the belief that nature does of course exist, but that certain things uh, owe their existence and development to a principle which is external that is extraneous both to choice and to the effects of uh, the human field. That is there are things which exist outside the domain of our social being that is uh, which is not really uh, within the control of uh, the human group. Now, these are mostly uh, typical to the western cosmologists. Now, beginning from uh, maybe the pre-enlightenment or the since the time of Plato and Aristotle, they tends to espouse this idea of naturalism in which 
they sort of uh, created an ontological domain and they believe in that the existence of maybe anything that without a reason or a cause that is that there has been always a causal explanation or more to do with uh, a scientific explanation that is there is nothing which uh, exists or happen without a reason or a cause that is whether maybe uh, in terms of God or maybe anything. So, that sort of uh, you know uh, ordering or questioning uh, uh, prevails which means the laws of nature is pretty much uh, integrated in this uh, belief system that is in naturalism. Now, why is it that uh, it is more of uh, questioning which is embedded in this system that is the naturalist system is, is because there is a shift in the discourse that is people normally do not subscribe to the totemic and the animic system or they do not really you know uh, subscribe to those supernatural forces. Man tends to you know move out of that and then uh, it tends to sort of evolve. Now, if we go by uh, the sort of the law of three stages which was uh, propounded by August Comte if you remember uh, or if you are familiar with Comte in a way tends to uh, describe uh, three, uh, three stages of uh, society or how the positivistic or positivism emerges. Now, prior to the positivistic states, there were two forms of uh, uh, stages. The first one was more of uh, the religious if not the fictitious states, which of course, uh, is more to do with the uh, totemic and the animistic states, where people normally do not question, but subscribe to uh, some kind of uh, supernatural forces. And uh, through this sort of belief, there was uh, a unity if not a solidarity. And after the fictitious or the religious states uh, or maybe in the religious states, maybe if you take the examples of the ancient kings kingship system. The kings normally tends to uh, uh, posit themselves to be the uh, divine rights that is they are in a way representing the God. So, nobody really questions their authority or they have that uh, underlying or overriding power against the subjects. Now, secondly in the military states it, it tends to you know like move away from this sort of belief and people tends to start questioning and in a way by engaging in maybe we can say the states of this naturalism that uh, there has to be a reason for a cause because nothing can exist in the vacuum. Though, so, this sort of sets of questioning in a, may, in a way pave way to the positivistic states. Now, in the final states uh, that is positivism or positivistic states, uh, Comte uh, tends to uh, give an idea that people tends to you know like uh, sort of believe in uh, establishing an empirical understanding and uh, they tends to be more engaged in observations and in making sense of the universe, they uh, rely more on objectivity rather than subjectivity. So, that is how this uh, the scientific knowledge or this positivistic states emerges. Now, I am just going back to, uh, as a recap of for us to familiarize uh, what Comte has actually looked at. Now, Comte does not stop there and uh, he is sort of idealized by using this positivism 
in trying to uh, make sense of the society or uh, make, uh, make sense of a human. But because what he says is uh, this sort of the method of natural sciences which is being uh, employed uh, in not only studying the physical uh, bodies or the, uh, the physicality, it can also be used in the study of society. That is why uh, in, 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 in even in the social sciences, we tend to use this idea of uh, empirical study. Uh, the method in a way is more or less being replicated even in the study of society. Now, therefore, the kind of study which we engage even in the context of uh, anthropology, people tend to engage in classifying things, making sense and trying to look at the dualism or the dichotomy which exists between nature and culture and through all these practices, one tries to uh, make sense of the society in tune with the nature. Now, uh, in this sense, uh, Latour in a way uh, argued that this increased artificialization of nature that is the operations of this science and technology beginning from the 17th century that is when the enlightenment period begins in a way uh, was made possible in practice because of uh, the, reinfor the reinforcement of the opposition between nature and society. Now, therefore, people tend to engage more into questioning the existence of things. And uh, if there is any kind of uh, sort of things happening, there is uh, more of an engagement in looking at uh, why it is cause. And now we will we'll try to move on looking at uh, the modes of categorization. Now, this categorization is again how the world uh, of uh, the, the, the divisions and the relations between human and non humans is being conceptualized by looking at uh, these elementary components that is uh, a way that this can be objectified in a more stable and socially recognized categories. Now, for example, if you look at the standard folk taxonomies, what is taxonomy? Taxonomy is more the science of classification uh, mostly used uh, in the classifying or categorizing the plants and animals. Now, what is this folk uh, taxonomies then? The, it, is, it is more of the knowledge which is uh, being embedded uh, or practices by the folk societies or the native societies of how they try to uh, categorize the plants and animals and this often uh, is organized according to the principle of similarity that is by metaphoric scheme. Now, what is this metaphoric scheme? Because it is again based on the trial and error the kind of knowledge which uh, these native societies maxims of plants and animals is sort of uh, through the constant practices over a period of time. That is maybe the ethnomedicine. So, before this knowledge is being uh, stored, they have constantly engaged in a sort of a trial and error method, which is more of a practical uh, in the units. So, there is uh, this reciprocity, which in a, in a, in a way is uh, engaged in how the human and the non-human uh, sort of uh, materialize, that is in their relations uh, between the constant exchange of services, souls, food or generic vitality. Now, what do we make uh, understood in this constant exchange of services and souls? Now, maybe 
if you look at the examples of the foraging uh, practices in the this the hunting and gathering now a group may usually engage in certain kind of rituals and ceremonies and in a way through these practices there is this uh, balances of the ecosystem of how or what kind of practices we delve into now for example uh, if you take the dominant belief in those systems that human in a way have sort of adapt towards the non-humans notably for the food the latter provide now uh, if you take the examples of let's say uh, the native hunting this art of hunting in a way before going for a hunt they practice a kind of uh, ritual perhaps praying to the uh, spirits of those uh, animals for them to you know like uh, supply them a foot now uh, it is not just that they venture out and then shoot any kind of animals for that matter for their own consumption but rather by this functions of praying in a way allows them to you know the animals voluntarily come and then surrender or sacrifices so that that sort of balances exist between them so that sort of uh, operation which exists between the human and non-human in a way is seen to be more of an exchange of services so therefore the human in a way has sort of uh, the an honest or adept which lies towards them so therefore in return this sort of relation is seen to be in the context of protection now in this anemic and the totemic system uh, if we bring in this idea of protection which of the two in a way protect and how does this uh, mediation uh, takes place maybe uh, how does the two mediate and because when there is a mediation generally there is an expectation that there will be a consensus or a, a kind of conditions which exist between the two now in return uh, let's say when the hunters come with an animal uh, normally the humans are at the more, more of a vantage point now in this context a uh, sort of a thanksgiving is being uh, re replicated in that now this protection if you bring in there is a direct and a permanent contact uh, sort of with this protected species and a type of dependency that is the dependency of the human on the non-human which are more to do with typical and interactions uh, so that for that sort of a healthy relationship which exists between the two that is the human and non-human takes place now if we you look at uh, the kind of hunting which takes place among the Buryat community in the Siberia there is this sort of relations which exist between uh, the animal which is being hunted and the spirits which dwell in the forest is more to be seen in terms of uh, equality and alliance this sort of uh, relationship is being established between the hunters and the animals which in a way is being encompassed uh, with a with relationship with the spirits of the forest now uh, in the a different setting in this community which were more or less engaged in pastoralism they maintain some kind of a hierarchical relations between the humans and these uh, protected non-humans that is the cattle so this sort of hierarchy is again established in the context of this uh, practice of pastoralism now whereas in the context of these the hunters they do have uh, a sort of maintained 
and equality and alliance. Now, let us move on to looking at what the totemic variation is. Now, in totemic system as we had discussed, the non-human in a sense provide uh, a sort of uh, labels for a social classification, because these totemic uh, totems are again signs that a society used to sort of uh, conceptualize its segmentation and as such, uh, they cannot constitute the terms of social relations with humans. But since the meaning and functions of these non-humans and are not limited to their role in social classification, the other aspects of their sort of practical if not the symbolic uh, potentialities may be emphasized uh, in other aspects of their social life. Now, there can be sort of uh, a predatory relations which exist between this totemic species. Uh, possibilities are there because since we are looking at the uh, context of the foraging societies. Now, in the context of these Australian aborigines, uh, where hunting is normally not used as an exchange. The product of this uh, covenant which exists between the humans and animals are rather to be seen as more of a cultural mundane activity, which is sort of seen to be a method of uh, procuring for the subsistence or maybe procurement of a food. Now, therefore, this sort of relations uh, which exists between in, in this context that is the reciprocal relationship between the human and non-human is uh, the pos possibility of more of a predation because uh, the totemic species which are more to be seen as a simple signifier of this social segmentation cannot in a way enter into a relationship with human. However, if you look into more of a purely uh, totemic systems, rather there are exceptions or in the context of these the Australian aborigines that they are often uh, clubbed together with the animic system which allow the expression of a relation in a more reciprocal, reciprocal if not uh, the kind of relationship which they share with the uh, non-human entities. Now, uh, as we had discussed in that naturalism and uh, what then is this naturalistic variations. In the, this form of naturalistic cosmology, there is no common ground which ex exists between humans and non-humans, rather they are being perceived as uh, more of uh, being interconnected to communities and uh, in the process the naturalism in a way loses this predicative role or maybe they are more or less confined into a separate ontological domains. And this sort of uh, dialectics which exists, the reciprocity amount to no more than a metaphor in which uh, the impossibilism of these uh, aspiration uh, tends to normally supersede this duality that is between the humans and the non-human. Now, uh, this sort of uh, a transcendental object or objectification, there is this uh, conservationist movement if you look at even in the current world, wherein the as a result of this environmental crisis, there is this urging uh, movement, maybe the conservationist, the wilder, wilderness movement or sort of protecting, they tend to engage in questioning uh, this foundation of this western cosmology and rather they tend to perpetuate 
reperpetuate and look at the ontological domain of this typical modern ideology. And uh, through this uh, ideas of uh, conservationist movement, they tend to sort of uh, isolate nature or tends to uh, separate uh, the humans from uh, this ontological domain. Therefore, this sort of divisions which is pretty much strong in the modern parlance uh, by sort of challenging this western cosmology, we tend to establish a different form of uh, or more to do with the sort of the idea of an, an, an escapable suppresses of uh, nature. That is by doing so, when we claim that uh, we want to sort of uh, see nature in isolation or to more of uh, protecting if not conserving nature, we are in a way uh, suppressing if not oppressing the nature. And this sort of uh, uh, philosophical understanding uh, which is guiding the western uh, world in a way will uh, sort of uh, crumble and it will eventually lead to uh, a crisis. So, the idea is not to you know maintain a boundary or sort of see nature in isolation, but the idea is to sort of form uh, or to locate that symbiotic relationship which is being shared. Because uh, as we had discussed in the context of how uh, a hunter is not uh, simply engaging in uh, sort of killing uh, the non-human entities, but rather there is a healthy and uh, alliance which is formed between the two. And uh, this sort of uh, classification of or ordering of things as separate in a way is more of hierarchical in nature. So, when there is a hierarchy which is being usually established, which means you are ordering things into a more of uh, trying to pop in a in indirectly propagating that human in a way is uh, superior to the non humans. So, therefore, in order to make sense or trying to bring in uh, the dualism of this the nature uh, the human and non human in a much more uh, healthy manner, it will be appropriate to see it as more of uh, uh, in a system of alliance that is to be part and then to be embedded with nature. Now, uh, these are some of the references which perhaps you can look at the works of uh, Descola, uh, the societies of nature and nature of societies which will uh, make our engagement in a much more meaningful way. The way we conceptualize nature and then how uh, through different belief system that is uh, in even in the totemic system, the animic system and even in uh, the naturalistic system. How these modes of ideas, the way we perceive nature evolve over time and across different societies and which particular societies, is it the native societies or is it the western world guided by that. Uh, natural sciences, the cosmology of natural sciences is adequate in a much more uh, healthy or if not conducive to our dualism of this nature and culture. So, I will stop here.